Have you ever had an expectation that you put on someone not met? Have you ever been let down by someone? The answer to that is yes, you have. Someone has let you down and someone has not met an expectation you put on them before. Think of the dumbest expectation you've ever put on someone. I'll give you a second. What were some of those expectations? Um, I expect you to wash the dishes. I expect you to wash your clothes. I expect you to wash the bathroom. I expect you to buy me food. I expect you to clean up after yourself. I expect you to like me. I expect you to not cheat on me. I expect you to uh, laugh at my jokes. An expectation I put on a lot of people and it's always met. I expect you to whatever the case is, the list goes on and on. You have all these expectations you put on people and more often than not, they're not met. I think so often we're let down by the expectations we place on other people because our expectations are born out of insecurity. But what would happen if we didn't let our insecurities shape our expectations of other people? I live with Jared Pickerel. Shout out to Jared Pickerel, best mom group ever. And I live with him at Casa de Pickerel. And I'm rarely ever home. I'm always out hanging out with other people, doing other things, having fun with some friends. Um, my buddy Nathan and I the other day, we were on our way to go hang out with some friends. And um, we made this pack because we knew that there was a huge chance that we weren't going to have fun with these people. So we made this pack that if one of us wasn't having a good time, all we had to do was go <laughs> to the other person. And then I would take out my phone and I'll go, oh, Jared? Yeah, oh, you need me to come home? You're locked out? All right, dude, I'll be right there. And then we would leave. And we made that pack and I put that expectation on him, not because I was insecure about who I was, not because I was insecure about um, whether or not he liked me or whether or not he wanted to be my friend or whether or not these other people wanted to be my friend. I put that expectation on him because I trusted him. And that's where I want to remain for the next couple of minutes is the idea that trust remains you to raise your expectations. This idea comes from week two of our Hope Quotient series that we're in, entitled Raise Your Expectations. How can we raise our expectations? But I don't want to I don't want to talk about people the whole time. I don't want to talk about the expectations we have on other people the whole time. I want to talk about Jesus. What is the key to making your expectations on Jesus, the expectations we place on him, on point? The answer is trust. If you don't trust Jesus, you'll never expect him to do anything great in your life. If you don't trust that his plan is perfect for you, you'll always try to do things on your own. If you don't trust that Jesus is for you, then when the hard times come, you'll feel like you're all alone and you'll fall victim to the, the idea and the thought that you have to fix everything by yourself. And there's a guy in 1 Samuel, his name is Jonathan, who knew all too well what it meant to trust Jesus. So it says in 1 Samuel 14, one day, Jonathan, son of Saul, said to his young armor bearer, Come, let's go over to the Philistine outposts on the other side. But he did not tell his father. And it goes on to say in verse 3 that no one was aware that Jonathan had left. So, so to put this into perspective, Jonathan and his armor bearer are with 600 of his father's army troops. And none of them have any weapons. There's only two swords in the whole land. And they're all hiding out in these, these hills. They're all hiding out in these caves. They're all hiding everywhere because they don't want to go to battle. And then it goes on in verse 4 to say, On each side of the pass of the pass that Jonathan intended to cross to reach the Philistine outpost was a cliff. So Jonathan and his armor bearer were going to go to the Philistines to try to destroy them because the Israelites and the Philistines don't really like each other. So they're going over there to defeat them. Just two people against the whole city of the Philistines. And it says, one cliff stood to the north toward Michmash, the other to the south towards Gila. Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, Come, let's go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised men. Perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. He, he's saying, perhaps the Lord will do what we want him to do, but I expect him to do what he wants to do. Because Jonathan trusted that God would do what God wanted to do, and that what God wanted to do was beneficial and better for Jonathan than what Jonathan wanted God to do. So it goes on and it explains that, that Jonathan and his armor bearer 
kind of had a little discussion like, Dude, should we go, should we not go? How about if we go and they see us, then we'll go and then we'll go fight them. And uh, they ended up seeing them. The Philistines saw Jonathan and his armor bearer. So they go up and they start fighting these men. And it says in verse 13, Jonathan climbed up using his hands and feet with his armor bearer right behind him. The Philistines fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer followed and killed behind him. In that first attack, Jonathan and his armor bearer killed some 20 men in an area about of about half an acre. So in verse 15, this is where it gets kind of crazy. It says, Then panic struck the whole army, army, those in the camp and field, and those in the outposts of raiding parties. And the ground shook. It was a panic sent by God. Do you trust God enough to have your whole world shaken? Because Jonathan knew what that meant. Jonathan trusted Jesus enough to go up there, two people against this whole army, and he trusted that Jesus would shake his world. So it goes on and says that Saul, who's Jonathan's dad, him and his army saw that Jonathan was going to battle with the Philistines. And so him and all the Israelites came out and started attacking the Philistines with them and going to battle with them. And it says in verse 20, then Saul and his men assembled and went to the battle. They found the Philistines in total confusion, striking each other with their own swords. Jonathan trusted God enough that it sent this whole army who was against God into confusion. It made them start to question whether what they were doing was right. So my question for you is, does your trust for Jesus send people into confusion, the people who are doing the wrong things? Does it make them unsure of what they're doing? And does it make them think that maybe what you're doing is the right thing? I don't know what may be stopping you from raising your expectations on Jesus and knowing that Jesus is for you, knowing that Jesus wants to bless you and expecting Jesus to bless you. But whatever it is, I think it all stems down to trust. Do you trust that God is for you? Do you trust that God wants to bless you? And I think we're sadly mistaken that, that God wants to bless us in ways that we want Him to bless us. You see, it, it says in Psalm 37.4 to take, take the light in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. And so often I hear Christians say, Oh, God wants to give you the desires of your heart. Do you like that girl? Oh, God wants to give, give you the desires of your heart. Oh, you, you want that big old house? You want that nice car? Well, let me tell you, God wants to give you the desires of your heart. And I hear that over and over again, especially being in the church so much. You hear that taken out of context, out of place so much. And you don't, you don't think about the, the first five words of that verse, where it says, take the light in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Because when you take delight in the Lord, your desires become God's desires. And once you see those start to come to fruition in your life, then Jeremiah 29 11 starts to come to, to real life. Jeremiah 29 11, where it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for you to prosper and not to harm you. And, and once you really start to trust and raise your expectations that Jesus does want to bless you, but only in the ways that He wants to bless you, not in the ways you want Him to bless you, and you start understanding and start knowing that He is for you and that you can trust Him and your expectations can be raised. It almost comes full circle. The only way you can raise your expectations on Jesus is to trust Him. And the only way you can trust Him is to raise your expectations.